ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله <coughs> we are at 13th lesson here in tajweed salam alaykum shaykh kif halak Alhamdulillah. We are doing, we just finished the lessons with regards, and I don't have any, pa- oh, I do have paper. We finished the lesson dealing with the wagunna meem and thumma noonin shuddida wa sammi kullil harfa gunnatin bibbada. And that deals with the noon and the meem, right? When they come, mushaddad, with the shadda on them. Remember that? And we mentioned here in this lesson that gunna, gunna is from the, the, the makeup of noon and meme. And that's why it's such a short chapter. You know, that ghunna is part of noon and ghunna is start of meme. And you hear it more when you have the mushaddad. And we went over this little sign right here. What is this little sign? What is that? It's a shadda. It means shadda. What does it do to a letter? Strengthen. Strengthen. So shadda means strengthen. But what is this right here? It's a scene? No, it's not a scene. What is it? Sheen. It's the letter Sheen. It's actually this letter right here with the three diacritical points. But what has happened, the tail has been cut off and the has gone away. The diacritical marks have been taken away. The same thing we see when we see with a sukun. We see a sukun. What is that? That's a sukun. We see it all the time. But what is it actually? No, it's not a ha. What is it? A kha. It's a kha. Right? It represents the word khalin. Okay, or khali, khali, which means to be, you know, khilwun, to be um, void of, not to have something. Okay, what it represents is not to have what? A vowel sound. Okay, when we see it over a letter, it means that the absence of a vowel sound. And that's what we see over the letters. And when you write freehand, it's written like this, right? Just a regular circle. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kif halakum. So we see that all the time. And the reason people write it as a circle as opposed to a khaw, because they don't really know what that is, number one, and it's easier to write with the circle. But now you know what it is. You follow me? I want to see blank faces, and I don't want to see moths running around and stuff like that. I want to hear fahm. Because if you understand, remember, our intention here is not to teach you yourself and you, only you. Our intention here is the ya'umul baraka, is that people, each one, teach one. As you learn, you go and you spread this out to other people on firm Knowledge, ala basira, on knowledge, okay? And remember, we mentioned earlier, or as a sidebar issue, uh, let's go over here, that, you know, to know something, alima, to know something, to gain knowledge, what does that mean? What does it mean to, to gain ilm, okay? Alima ya'lamu ilman, so you have ilm. What does it mean to have knowledge? Oh, you had your hand up? Yeah, what does it mean? What does it mean to know something? Yes. Okay, but I want, it, I want it something different then. I want a practical meaning of what does it mean when you learn something. What it means when you learn something is that something has become wadih. Okay, something has become clear. Okay, that is the basic bottom line with knowledge. Something, there's no more shock because there's how many levels of knowledge? Huh? How many levels? Six. Six. The highest of them is ilm. And it is to recognize and to know something the way it is in reality. Okay? To know something and to see it and to understand it the way it is in reality. Ala haqiqa. Okay? The way it actually is. The first step is what? This is jahl. Jahl basit. Simple, basic ignorance. And what is jahl basit? Come on, guys. This is, these are the issues that you need to know as we go through these issues over here. Okay? Jahl basit which is basic ignorance, it's just not to know something in kuliya, bil kuliya. You're not to know something completely. Who knows math? Raise your hand. One plus one is what? Okay, you don't have to think about it. Who can tell me about quantum physics? So we are jahl. We're ignorant. Jahl basit. Because the thing about someone who's ignorant about something, he knows he doesn't know that thing so well. If we sit through it, we might be able to understand some of it. Right? If we go slow and stuff like that and we understand the terminology, we might be able to follow it somewhat, but we still be ignorant of how to use it and what the purpose of it all is. That's jahl basit. What's the next stage of knowledge? Jahl murakkab. Murakkab. Jazakum Jahl murakkab is from the word rakaba. When you ride a horse, tarkabuhu. 
right? Jahl muraqab is ignorance on top of ignorance. Why? What is that? How does that go? It's when someone is ignorant of something in kulliya. However, he's ignorant of the fact that he's ignorant of that thing. For example, sometimes a student listens to a lesson. He thinks he understood. Then he goes away and he teaches it, but he's wrong. And if you tell him, no, you're wrong, he says, no, 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 I'm right. So he's ignorant of what he's teaching, and he's also ignorant of the fact that he's ignorant of the thing that he, he, he wants to know. Do everybody understand that? That's ignorance on top of ignorance. Jahl muraqqab. It happens all the time in class when people raise their hand and say, I know, I know, and they get it wrong. Very simple. What's the next step? <coughs> to wahm, wahm. Wahm, which is to be in confusion. To be a little confused. It is to recognize something the way it is, but to have more information that says, well, you know, it's not actually that way. The best way to understand it that I do is, is that I remember, is to go back to the Shi'r al-Jahaliyyah, poetry of Jahaliyyah of Zuhair ibn Abi Sulma, Mu'allaqat al sabah You know, the, the, the Mu'allaqat, the ones that they used to hang on the Kaaba. They didn't actually do it, but they get known for doing that. And these seven poems, you know, Shaykh al-Albani said you should recite them and learn them. And all the different shiuch, they talk about learning them so it help you in your Arabic. One of the lines in these poems is, وَقَفْتُ بِهَا مِنْ بَعْدَ عِشْرِينَ حِجَّةً فَلَا يَنَرَفْتُ دَارًا بَعْدَ التَّوَهُّمِ He said, وَقَفْتُ بِهَا مِنْ بَعْدَ عِشْرِينَ حِجَّةً I stopped by her house after عِشْرِينَ حِجَّةً What is عِشْرِين? 20, what is hijja? Hajjahs, right? I stopped by a house after 20 hajjahs. How many years is that? It's poetry, guys. He's trying to say, I stopped by there after going to Hajj 20 times. 20 years have gone by. I ain't been there in a long time. Falayan, so slowly, araftu dara, I recognized her house, bada tawahumi, after being confused. Who's going back to their old neighborhood? You go back to your old neighborhood, New York, and you don't even recognize it anymore. Everything's changed. I remember I used to live in Tanta in Egypt before they made the streets. And you used to, garbage was everywhere, and you had to wear boots in the summertime after rainy season because it was so much mud. And then when they put down a blacktop, it looked so much nicer, you know, the, the, the tar. And now the street looks totally different. You could get confused if you go back there. Or you remember New York when they had the cobblestones in the 70s. And now they have the streets, and you see the lines where they used to have the trolleys go through. That's, that's back there, you know? So now it looks different. So, wahm is when you understand a thing, but you're still confused about it. Okay, it's like to know something 30% of it and 70% you're still confused. That's a type of knowledge. But you're not jahl. You're not totally ignorant of it and you're not thinking that you know it when you actually don't. What's the next step? Shek. Jazakumullah khair. Shek is the next step. It is doubt. It's literally doubt. But see, there's a difference between shek and raid. Okay? Because we, we translate both these as doubt. In the English language, they translate raib as doubt. He said, ذلك الكتاب لا رايب فيه. No? No doubt about it. But raib here and is different from shak. Shak is doubt with regards to facts. Straight up facts. You don't get your facts right. Ashukku fi ذلك. I'm doubting about whether that's right or wrong. Raib is doubt with regards to trust. Do you understand the difference? You say, yeah, that's suspicious. And I have a raid. Do you guys understand the difference between trust of the facts? Right there? So there's a difference in there. And they both mix into each other, but we're talking about the inclination of one over the other. So shack here is to understand something 50% of the way, the way it is, and then have equal information saying it's the opposite way. Okay? So you're doubting in that thing. You don't understand it the way it's supposed to be, but you understand it the way it is supposed to be too. But, you know, if you're supposed to go down the street this way, why do I remember the fire hydrant on this side? Okay? Now, what's the next stage? Come on, you've been helping out all this time. It's dhan. In the Bible, dhan is ifm, but this one is not ifm. That's the okay. component in ignorance, right? I'm sorry? What is the English for the dhan? Dhan is, is to, um, it's assumption. What is dhan? How do we say dhan in English? Somebody tell me. Re, huh? Preponderance. preponderance. The preponderance. No, we don't say that word. What? Is, give me a word. Come on, Shabir. You looking around? Tell me, Zun. What is Zun? What? Tell me, Zun. Ah, you know, people. Y'all don't know what is. I think they swear they say that in English. But what is? Give me a word that means Zun. We say we say. Huh? It's it's. I'll tell you. I'll describe it, and then you guys tell me what it is in English, because I forget the word. 
One is what you have in your mind right now that you said, I know you have a plan in your mind. When I leave here, I'm going home. Okay? That's what you're thinking that you're going to do. But you also know in your head that something may happen and you might get distracted and go a different way than you normally go. So the thing that you have in your head that you know you're going to do is like, you know, pretty sure that's called vun. Okay. But along with uh, carrying along with that is the thought that, yeah, well, something could happen. I could go. Usually I go down Fordham Road. But yeah, I might walk up the hill and the brother might call me and I go down, you know, Gun Hill Road. You understand? So that is vun. You everybody got that? And that's why she said the preponderance, what, you, what, you, what, what weighs heavy on your mind, what you think is going to happen. You see, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, used to say all the time, the madhannatul muslimin, what you expect to see from the Muslims. He used the word madhannatul muslimin. You know, what you, what you normally see from the Muslims when he's talking about the beard and on the men in Hanna and the children, um, what they call it, reciting Quran and Sirarihim. You know, so this is what we find is dhun. And it is tied to 70% of knowing the thing. Okay, and if you have dhun, you also have waham. Okay, that's that 30% to make the 100. And shak is 50 for 50, and ilm is 100%. Knowing the thing the way it is in reality without any shak, wala raib, wala dhun. You know it the way it is. Like if we say 1 plus 1 equals 3, you say no way. No way. Not in math. Okay? So that's what we talk about. Everybody follow me? Now let's go back over here. So. We have this Shadda and we have this Sukun. Everybody follow? Now we're going to the next lesson. The next lesson that we have here is called, um, what do you call it? Ahkam wa Meem as Sakina. Ahkam. A Meem. A Sakina. Now, Ahkam, what does Ahkam mean? Rule. It doesn't mean rulings. What's the, it's the plural of what word? Hukum. This is the way you do it. Remember, every time we do this, we do it a certain way. Why? Because this is the way you're supposed to do it when you teach it to somebody else. You always do it over and over and over again. So the students say, yeah, I know that ahkam is hukum. I know it because we've done it so much and so much and so much and so much. Ahkam is the plural of hukum. What is a hukum? Ruling. Rules or regulations, right? It's from the word hikmah, wisdom, you know? So it's a wise rule. Now he says al-meem. What is meem? Meem is the letter ma'roof. Okay, there's a letter from the letters of the alphabet. What is sakina? Sukun. It's when the letter, that's why we went over this again. It's when the letter is khali min at taharruk. It means when the letter, the meme, is free and void of having a vowel sound. What are the vowel sounds? So there are three vowel sounds, right? A, E, U, right? A is represented by a slash above, kas, kasra is with a slash under it, and the dhamma is with a wow, small wow, because that's the sound of the wow, ooh, right? So, we have it like that. So, a sakina is hal al meme. It's the, 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 the situation that that meme is in. It is not moving. Sakina, what does sakina mean? Reside. It means to reside. Sakina, right? Tranquility. Rest. rest. So, this meme is at rest. It's not moving. So what stays is the constant sound of the meme and not the sound of the meme as it's moving. It's not saying ma, me, mu. Everybody with me? You follow? And also it is not mushaddadatun. Right? It doesn't have a shadda on it. We got it? Now, we, when you learned your alphabet, you learned the meme. Who can tell me meme? Read the poem for Master Letters for meme. Because remember, your, your, your lessons coincide. What is me? My mama, Mabel, mastered math, manipulating meme. She multiplied and by my pops by 40, she had me. Tejwidu Mimun has how many rules now? Tejwidu me. See, this is why you need to memorize. Because if you memorize your lesson there, you can use it here because there's no schizophrenia in Islam. There's three rules. Tejwidu Mimun has three rules. This you all should know. And now you're going to learn the three rules of, of this, this meme. Let me erase this board some. Somebody help me. Erase everything except for the um, title, please. I'll spray. If you don't memorize people, there's no benefit. Because what will happen as you get older, you'll forget. And then you have to go back. And, and I mean, 
It's no benefit. You can't use it if you don't remember it. You know? You can't use it. Now, memorization is of two types. There's hifz al-dhin min al-ghayb and it's hifz al-sadr. Hifz al-sadr is real good because you can write it down to the winner. You see, I'm teaching out of my old book and everything like that. That's what you can, you write it down. That's allowable. But you have to keep good notes and everything and be able to reflect back on what was said and organize it. And I always tell students, use two books. One that you write down in class and one that you got at home that you take the stuff that you wrote down in class and you organize it. After you organize it in your regular mess up book and you show that to the teacher, then you go back and he says, okay, that's correct. Then you go and organize it in your other book and it's like your teaching book now. Okay? And then you bring that, and he says, okay, like this, that, and everything. You say, okay, now you got everything in order. And you keep that, and you preserve that, and you put it, when you make your libraries, you know, when you make your libraries, you put your sections, and this, I learned this from different students, they put their books like this, and then right there you'll see a book like this. You say, well, what is that book? No, don't touch my book. <laughs> now this book has in it how he's going to teach those other volumes books right there. Okay, he has it in there like that and different notes and stuff like that. Even some shiuk, what they do is they take a book for every book that they, they study. And they put in that book the pages that they want to remember and different stuff like that. Because every time you want to go back to that book, you forget what page, what chapter. You go to this book and remember, oh, chapter 3, it has these benefits. And it's on these pages that those benefits are at. And you can easily find that when you have to do something. Okay? Organization, you have to learn it. You pick it up piece by piece. These things can't all be given to you at one time. People say, well, teach me all of it. You can't do it. It's only done by sitting and, and consistency, you know? Now, it says the rules, regard, rules and regulations regarding Mima Sakina. It says here, Mima Sakina is the meme that has no vowel sound connected to it. It's constant M sound will be heard, but no I U sound will be pronounced in the associ in association with the Mima Sakina. Okay, it's the first line goes this way. Wal Mim, say it after me, please. In Taskun. Taji. Taji. لا ألف لينة لذي الهجاء لذي الهجاء Okay, let me go over this. This is a very simple um, line. It says والميم والميم إن تسكن تجي قبل الهجاء لا ألف لينة لذي الهجاء What it means is, and the mean, in, here's like we say, insha'Allah, when, if it comes, tesskun, when it is, or if the meme is sakin, okay, if it has a sukun over it, teji, it comes, Right? The meme. And it's tab because the letter is feminine. It comes qabla before hija. Here hija means huruful hija'iya. Hija means huruful hija'iya. What does hija mean? Al huruf. Al hija'iya. Al hija'iya means basically the alphabet. Okay? Huruf al-hija'iya is the alphabet, the Arabic alphabet. Okay, in the order that comes alif un ba un ta un tha un jim ha kha. Because if it's not named huruf al hijaiya, it's called huruf al abjadiya. And we know abjadiya, right? Al abjadiya, right? Right? Do we know abjadiya? Okay, what is it abjadiya? Abjad how was hutia kaliman safas? Okay, so that's the two types of ways the alphabet is named. It's named huruful hijaiya when it comes in the way uh, the, 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 what do you call those guys? For the fight, what do you fight those guys? Crusaders brought it. Alifum ba, ta, tha, jim, ha, that way. Or abjadiya, the way they had it before the, the, the fighting with the crusades, which is called abjadiya. Everybody understand that? It's a sidebar issue. But it has to tie it to this line when it comes to when it comes qabla al hijaf. Okay? Now, la alifin. Everybody understand that first line? It's a very simple line. Mean whenever it comes, it comes before all the alphabet. That's what he's saying. 
The meme comes sukun before every letter in the alphabet. This is what the line means. Say it again. What this line means, well, mimu in taskun taji qabl al hijah means that when the meme, when it comes sakin, it will appear before all the letters. Why is it important that he makes this point? Because what we're doing, what did I tell you earlier when we did the beginning of usul al tafsir, we, we mentioned, and usul al tajweed, we mentioned that tafsir, kira'a, and tajweed, they all mix together, right? Ilm al Quran is tied to tajweed. Because from the ulum, from the sciences of the Qur'an, is learning how to recite it, the way it was revealed. And also learning how the letters come. You become knowledgeable, you become familiar with everything about this book, about this Qur'an, right? And also in the, the science of Qira'a, it tells you which letters come ta maftuha, which ones come ta maburta. It's very detailed. We call it rasmi, how the Qur'an is written. A lot of students these days don't want to sit for these lessons because you can't go giving fatwas with it. You can't, there's nothing you could, you know, you can brag about to it. You got to sit down and do it. You know, and it takes time, consistency. However, this is part of the rasmal of the Qur'an because he's telling you now, meme, when it comes, it comes sakina, and if it comes sakin, it comes before all the letters, except one. La alif in layinatil hijah. He says, except no alif layina. What is alif layina? This is a term now. This is a term called alifun layina. And I'm putting a box over it because I don't want to underline. Okay? It's called alif layina. What's the word called? What does layina mean? We went over this. We said lean. We spoke about lean. When you learned the alphabet, I taught you this term is called lean. Okay? It's from the sifat. Lean, everybody say this word. Lean, lean is when you have what we call diphthongs in, in, in English. You have the ow sound or you have the a sound. Okay? Say ow. ow. A. a. You practice it in Quran when you say khawf or bait, you know, those ayat right there, because it mentions that. So this is when the alif of the wow or the ya, they come layina, easy. Right? The Allah tells us, لَقُولُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنَا لَعَلَّهُ Yeah, I forget the rest of the ayat, وَمَنْ سَنِي إِلَّا شَيْطَانِ It was Musa was told to speak to Fir'aun with a light word, easy word. Okay? So that the so al-ala sh um, shaytan, Fir'aun might re remember and come back. So alif layina is the alif, just like the wow and ya that come in the same, same style, lean, when the alif comes with a, a fatah before it. Okay? This is called layina. Because remember, when you did the alphabet, the first letter, the alif, it only comes after fat, only following a fat. Alif does not have its own sound. It only shows up after a fat. That's the rule. There are exceptions. Or shows up at the ends of words right before they crash. But that's another thing. But the first rule that we learned about Alif is that it always shows up after what? Fat. And we mentioned also, again, sidebar over here, that Alif is a term that represents what? It represents Alif and it also represents what? Hamza. How many Hamzas? Two types of Hamza. What does this sign right here mean? How's it, what is that sign? It's an Ain, right? It's an ain. What is this sign right here? A sun. It's a sun. Why did they come like that? Because this uh, ain from the word what? Qata'i. Right? And this is the ain from what? Wasli. All right? You get that? Wasl means to join. So you put the sun. Qati means to cut it. And this is how you have that. So when you recite this, whenever you see this one, you say a-i-u. It cuts into the word. Right? And when you see this one, it joins, you just join it, and it rides upon the alifun, the wow, and even, yeah. That's what the Hamza, right? But we call it alif. So alif is itself and also Hamza. Alif is itself and also Hamza. Well, Hamza is itself, not else, that's it. Jazakallah khair, salam alaikum, ma'am. That's it, not else, just Hamza, Hamza. And he says Hamza, Hamza, why? Because it's Hamza tul qata'i and Hamza tul wasli. You see how if you memorize one lesson, it helps you in the other one? Okay, that's that right there. So, 
That's what we're talking about with regards to the Hamza and the, the Hamza to Wasli and Hamza to Qati. When we're dealing with the Alif, it only comes after Fatha. Right? So if that's the case, there cannot be no meme or sack you know, before an Alif, can there? Now before an Alif, a layina. Can there be? Do you guys follow me or don't follow me? I didn't think this was difficult because if meme is sacking, meme comes sacking right here, then as an alif, can there be an alif there? Why? Because alif can only come before a, a what? A fatha. And if it's fatha, then it's not meme sacking, is it? So that's why he says, la alif in layyina li dhil hija. Dhil hija means the one who got an intellect. Smart guy. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Dhil hija means dhul aql, the one who has an intellect. Whoever can think can know that we're not talking about alif layyina. When we mention al hija Everybody follow me in this right here? Or did I go too quick? Wow. <laughs> Let me repeat it one more time, okay? Well, mimu in taskun ataji qabla al hija la alif in layyina tin lidhi al hija He says, the meme, when it comes sakina, it comes before every letter. Okay? It comes for every letter. It comes before ba, ta, tha, jim, ha, kha. Okay? All dal, dal, ra, za, sin, shin, sadad, ta, da, ain, gain, fa, qaf, kaf, lam, mimnu, ha, wa, ya. La alif in layyina. You notice we didn't say alif. It doesn't come, however, before alif in layyina. What is alif in layyina? The alif that comes. With wow and yeah. No, with a fatha before it. Okay? And this should be well known to the one who has hija, has an intellect, who can think. Okay? He's, he's just being, he's not saying you're ignorant. I mean, we are ignorant, but he's not disrespecting anybody in this line. He's saying if you think about it, it can't be alif layina. That's the only point that he's making here. Okay? Let me do this again. You see, if meme comes sukun, it comes before del, del, ra, ze, sin, right, sheen, and all the other letters, ila akhirihi, okay? Not, but if it's sukun, it won't come before alif, because alif layina is the alif that comes before, an, uh, an alif that comes with a fatah before it. And that means there's a contra counter introduction here. That means we're saying an uh, oxymoronic statement. If this alif layina is an ibadah, an expression of an alif that comes with a fatha before it, and the meme is meme a sakina, meaning the letter meme with a sukun over it, there is no way these two can come together, ever. Does that make more sense yeah. like that? Yeah. Okay, so I just wham through that pretty cool. Jazakallah <laughs> khair. You know, my teacher used to say that your students are your teachers because they teach you how to teach. They teach you what makes sense. It may make sense to people who already know it, but you ain't trying to talk it to them. You got to explain it to people who don't know it and then you get to know it. So everybody's clear on that, right? Okay. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa Takhir jiddan. Aish. Help me out. Help me out. La, 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 la. Salli wa katai. Okay. والميم إن تسكون قبل تجي قبل الهجالة ألف اللينة الذي الحجاء. That's the first line right here. أحكامه ثلاثة لمن ضبط. The next line goes as such. أحكامها. What am I saying? Okay, I'll read my notes. What I wrote, I said this line means that the meme of sakina will come before every letter in the alphabet except ألف اللينة. And this is because ألف اللينة only comes before letters that carry فتح. Also, the alif is called layina or relenting because it sounds, relents to whatever the present, preceding letter is. For example, ma, la, the, each has an alifu layina in its construction and in each the alif sound relents or gives in to the sound of the letter before it. Now, I'm not going to put that on the board because that is just something lugatan that really doesn't, uh, linguistically, that really doesn't really make a point for us right here. Here the next line goes. Say this, please. Thalathatun. Thalathatun. Liman. 
dhabat. And we know this word dhabat because when we listen to a hadith, we only listen to a hadith from adlun dhabitun. For someone who is just, upright, and dhabt. He's meticulous, he's sharp, he knows his business, right? Ikhfa'u, say ikhfa'u. Idhamun. Wa idharun. Faqat. Okay, now when we did this, my teacher told me, Ikhfarun idhamun. So here is, is like a, um, we call it knuckle. The, there is a tanween here. Ikhfarun, right? But that means the noon sound comes there. What we have in, in tajweed of Quran, you see sometimes we say, Qul wallahu ahad. Oh no. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq. Right? Qul a'udhu. So in warsh, they say, Qul a'udhu. You notice the difference? There's no pause there. The, the Hamza went over to the next one, right? Here, we have a similar type of thing. What happens here, the ten ween, instead of saying, Ikhfa'un, Idramun, it says, Ikhfa'un id. You, you see what we did like that? Ikhfa'un idramun wa idharun faqat. Okay, and that was a point he made. And when you teach it, he said from the riwayah that goes, Ikhfa'un idramun wa, ikhfa wa idharun faqat. You follow me? Now they don't do that in hops and, 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 and awesome. So you may not be familiar with it, but we don't want to be stuck on stupid and stuck in a, in a little you know, pigeonholed world. You know, there are seven qira'at, mashhur, well known. This is one of the mashhur ways, and so you, you get to practice this type of thing. So when you hear the qira'at, you enjoy it and not feel like, oh my God, what did he say? You know, <laughs> let's go through it. So that's it. There's only three rules. The rule is real easy. This line is real easy. Again, what does ahkamuha mean? What does ahkam, plural of? Hukum. What does the mean? It goes back. Here it means it. But what it? It refers back to the last thing that was mentioned, and that was mimu sakina. Ahkamu mimu sakina. So it's as we're talking about saying, ahkamu mimu sakina. And since the Arabs love what? Abbreviation. Yughni, this ha, yughni him min dhakri al jumla sabiqa. This ha right here frees them up from having to mention all over again, mimu ahkamu mimu sakina. Right? So instead of saying, ahkamu mi masakina thalathatun, ahkamu ha. And this ha goes back to the last thing that was mentioned, which was mi masakina. Rip me? So ahkamu ha thalathatun. And what hukum, what does a hukum mean? Tell me. Ruling. See, because if you don't tell me, I don't know that you know. And if you don't know, then you don't know. Okay? So, ahkamu ha thalathatun. Come on, five minutes, two minutes, no minutes. Now? Five. Okay, thank you. The rules and regulations of Mimu Sakina are how many? Three. Three. Real simple. Liman Dabat. For the one who ha who's meticulous and sharp and understands it. That's what Dabt is. Dabt means that you know what you know very well. You know, as Ali ibn Abi Talib said, Qimatu Rajul Ma Ahsana. The worth of a man, radiallahu anhu, is what he perfects, what he's good at. And if he ain't good at nothing, there's no benefit for him. Okay? Astaghfirullah. Whose jacket is that? It's mine. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. So, Liman Dabat. So, the one who is sharp. Meaning Dab that he took the rules, he memorized them, he wrote them down, he, he learned that what they meant, and he didn't forget that. And if he did, he put it down in writing so he could remind himself. Okay? So, what are the three rules? Ikhfa'un idhamun wa idharun faqat. Faqat means that's it. That's only. Faqat, oh my goodness. You know, that, that means that, that means only. Only. Faqat means only. But it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful word in Arabic, meaning that whatever we mentioned earlier, that's it. Nothing else. Okay? At all. Only at all. You know? Like that, it's kind of weird like that. So, we know ikhfa, we know ikhfa like that. You know if somebody calls it, it's got to be my wife. Ikhfa, right? We know idgham, and we know idha. What is ikhfa? We mentioned, we learned these rules before. See, guys, I don't want to hear this hesitation. Hesitation because we learned what ikhfa was. What is ikhfa? We got to go off of some... Excuse me? Sorry? 
To cover and conceal. It's a sitra. Ikhfahia. It is to it's to make the sound between idhar and idram, right? Between a tune. To fade it in. That's what we say. We call it cover and concealment. You glide that word in. That's what the noon is sacking it, right? Now what is idram? Come on, dakhla shayfi shay, to enter something into something else. Just like I put my hand in my sleeve right here, and now you no longer see my hand. That's when we find this word, we say, main yat melon, there's no more noon. Mir rabbihim, right? There's no min rabbihim, mir rabbihim. Goes, it's dakhla, that noon into the raw, no more, no more noon. You know, min ladunka, no more noon. We say, min ladunka, the lamb eats it up, right? Complete idram, right? So then we have two types of idram, what are they? Da. Idram bi gunna bi gunna bi ghayri gunna. Right? Idram with gunna. Is it going to be gunna here? Yes. Because it's meme. And we say, wa gunna meme and thumma noon it should did that wa sami kullin a harfa gunna tin bada. We said that gunna is from the bina. It's from the makeup of meme. So it's going to be gunna here. Okay? So we're going to look out for that. Then it says idhar. What is idhar? Clear. Clear, independent. It makes the sound, the sound is clear and independent. So we're talking about meme sakina, and we're going to stop here. Um, we're talking about meme sakina. When the meme sakina comes clear, M, and there's no other thing else, you have to clearly and independently sound that meme out and have it stop right there. Whereas this other one, it might fade into another letter. When this one right here, it might, it's, no, this one is fading into another letter, and this one is going to be entered into another letter in total. Okay, so we have to learn, it's very simple, we have to learn these three rules right here. We'll do it after the salah, inshallah ta'ala, real simple, and then we'll go on to our next lesson. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li, wa lakum, wa salamu alaykum, wa rahmatullahi, wa barakatuh. Since it's us here, when we finish the salah... Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man ittaba'ahu ila yawm al-deen. We're going to be brief here because we have to get to our Arabic class and then we have to do some fiqh. So it's time for our daily test or quiz or whatever you want to call it. We're going to, we did two lines of poetry today. Two lines. Right, well, did anybody memorize them? وَمِيمَ إِن تَسْكُنْ تَجِي قَبْلَ الْحِجَى لَا أَلِفِ اللَّيِّنَةٍ لِذِي الْحِجَى if we do it like this, we need to know there's some questions that pop up. The first question that I'm going to ask you guys is, what does what's the first line mean? Well, mimu in teskun taji qabl al hijab. What does that mean? What does it mean when it says the meme? What does it mean? Speak up. The meme comes before every letter. The meme comes. Meme sacking. Pay attention, right? It's not the meme. It's the meme sakina. Comes before every letter, right? Is that true, ladies? Yes. I'm asking the ladies. Ladies, what's the rule? Is, there, is this rule true? It's not true. It's, if it's true, it's not true. Is it true? No. There is an exception. What's the exception, ladies? Alif Lam? No. Alif Layina. Except it comes before every letter. Every letter except which one? Alif layina. Alif layina. What is an alif layina men? Somebody tell me what an alif layina is. What? That comes to the second question. What is alif layina? I can't understand you. An alif that comes with a fatah before it. An alif that comes with a fatah before it. An alif that comes with a fatah before it is called what? Alif layina. No, it's not called lean. Lean is when a wow comes with a fatah before it or with a ya that comes with a fatah before it. This is called lean. Okay? This is called lean. Alif layina is by itself. They're cousins. But, you know, this is alif layina. Okay, everybody understands that? What does layina mean? I, dis I described it as relenting. You, you don't necessarily have to memorize what I described it as. I mean, it's easy. What it does, why is it easy? Because it takes the sound of every letter before. So if it's ma, or fa, or qa, you understand? That's how it comes. It changes its sound. So it relents to whatever comes before it. 
So that's why it's called that. Oto. You know? So this is why it's called Alif al Now, <clears throat> the third question is, how many rules are tied to the Amima Sakina? How many rules? Ladies, ladies. I need a, I need a full sentence. Hunaka thalatha talahkam li mimu sakina. Okay? Or there are three rules tied to mimu sakina. Let me hear a quick the answer. What's the answer? Liman dabat. That's great. You know, this is from balagha to use the, the, the ayat from Quran or hadith or from the shi'r to mention it as, and not mention it like you're reciting it from the Quran, but mention it in a sentence. This is called balagha because it's the best speech. We say khayru kalam, kalam Allah. Right? So he says, she said, Thalatha to liman daba. That's good. It's three rules for the one who has dubbed. Who's, what does dubbed mean? Anybody? What, what is dubbed? What? You know very well. Sharp, meticulous. Okay, what did you say? You know very well. He knows very well. He's not uh, incompetent. The opposite of dubbed is incompetent. And click your fingers. He gets it mixed up. Okay? He gets the issues mixed up. So he doesn't know it so well. But the one who's dubbed, he, he delineates. He knows this is the line, that's the line, I'm between them. Okay? Now, <clears throat> usually it's tied to what science? Come on now. Ahl al hadith, ya ikhwan. We're supposed to be Ahl al hadith. Adlum dabit. Someone who is right and up, 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 upright and exact. Right and exact from right and exact, no doubt about it. He knows all his facts. Okay? That's what Dabitun. Adlun Dabitun. So then it says, what are those three rules? Somebody tell me what the three rules are. I, I can't understand you. I hear a bunch of Dajij. I want to hear it loud and clear. Go ahead. Right. Ikhfa'un idghamun wa idharun faqat. That's it. No more rules. It's three rules. That's the end of your lesson for today. You know those four. Those are four questions. The four questions are, what are the rules? What are those three rules? The names of them. What are the names of those three rules? The next time we come to the lesson, we'll break down each one of those three rules and how it's applied practically with the Mima Sakina. But, we have to know this, get familiar with this before we step into it. You know, the, the science of Tajweed is a very easy science. The only problem is, that most people don't teach it from the classical texts that cover everything, and they don't take their time and go each piece by piece. If you go piece by piece by the end of it, you are an expert in Tajweed. There's only two texts that deal with just Tajweed. Jamzuri and Jazari. That's it. Those are the two classics. If we get them knocked out, the only thing left is now Qira'at. Now we've left the signs of just Tajweed khalis, now we're in qira'at with dhuqt or rasm. And that's, you know, mustawa ali, you compare it to the tajweed. Do you understand that? So, let's get the board done and let's go on to our next lesson. <clears throat> the next lesson we're going to be doing is Arabic. Do, do, I, do I stop this or do I keep going? Okay. You erase the board, please, and then I'm going to start. Ready to start?